Done. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to live Q&A with me. It is February 26th, 2018. This is the last one you'll see. We're pretty much one sixth done with the year already. That's crazy. Now, just this morning, I arrived on an airplane, got back from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, where we went from there to Oxford and went to the recon event. Um, did a lot of different traveling there. We uh, went to um, uh, we went to Dayton and went to Cardboard Crowns Cafe, which was an amazing uh, game cafe. Went to several stores there. A couple were not so hot, but um, we did find Epic Loot, which was a great one of the best game stores I've ever seen. Honestly, just a fantastic gaming store. And went to the Air Museum there, and then spent most of our time um, at Oxford in Oxford, playing games with people and running, doing some just different events there. It was a lot of fun. If this is your new time, if this is your first time here, folks, um, I'm asking, I'm answering questions, so you can send them. I don't answer everyone's questions. Um, I'm actually having an FAQ going up tomorrow of frequently asked questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them, and I may get to them. So we're going to start. If you ask questions before I start it, you need to ask them again, because I'm starting with ones that start right now. What was my favorite part of the Air Force Museum? Well, I got to see my three favorite planes. I've never seen them before. The SR-71, which was really cool, and the um, B-2 bomber, and the stealth fighter. I've only ever seen pictures of all three of those planes, or movies or whatever, and it was really neat to see them in person. Although walking through one of the Air Force Ones, the one that uh, Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in on, that was also really cool too. I mean, basically the whole museum was cool. Seeing all these airplanes and things, just a really neat thing. That was a great museum. Really great museum. Um, can I do a top 10 steampunk games? Maybe at some point. Are you going to continue the Why I Love series anytime soon? Eh, probably. I don't like being forced to watch air. I don't actually understand what that means. Sorry. Um, which house were you sorted into? I'd probably be in Hufflepuff, right? I don't know, or Ravenclaw. Tom, what was the best part of sitting in on Melody's and Jason's top 100 list? I just really like that dynamic. Um, I, I feel, I said this before, but I hope that when uh, the Dice Tower ends someday, or my legacy and people, I don't think people ever look back and say Tom Bassel was the greatest board game reviewer of all time, blah, blah, blah. I don't think we'll see a lot of that, but I would hope that some people will say Tom was really good at finding people and putting people together, you know, like the Sam and Z dynamic and the Mandy and Suzanne and Melody and Jason, there's sometimes I just, I'm like, wow, these people bounce off each other really well and put them together. And that's kind of what I hope people will find. It was a lot of fun for me. Why did it take so long to get an FAQ video? Well, I beat you anyway. Uh, let's see here. What do you think is the most important part of a gaming store? I think professionalism more than anything else. So we went to three game stores and I won't mention the names of the first two. The first one, we walked in, they had a decent selection of board games, a lot of games. We weren't talked to at all. The person at the counter was too busy talking to someone else about role-playing games. They, they didn't talk to us the entire time. And I walked through the whole store slowly, looked around, looked at stuff, never once was talked to. Um, and that's just a lack of professionalism. The second one uh, we went to, there was a very, very friendly person, almost too friendly because you went in and the store was really, really small. So they were like right there and they talked to us, but they didn't know anything about games at all. And they had a really tiny selection. And it was very obvious that it was just a magic shop. I didn't really have a problem with that store. It just wasn't very interesting. There's nothing there. Just a few, like maybe we're talking like 20 or less board games. And so it's like, oh, okay, you know, but at least the guy was very friendly. But Epic Loot was just amazing. We walked in and there were three games that they were trying to sell. Um, the um, the uh, stuffed fables, uh, not, yeah, stuffed fables, and um, a couple other games which I'm forgetting now. Oh, oh, Raiders of the North Sea, and they had the games set up on display. So then it was there, and then there was the game. So you can see that you can see the game set up, and then you could buy it. So there's three of these displays. They had the everything was in nice organized sections. They had miniatures and comics and board games, and there's there, they had a deep selection. They had a really nice gaming area. They had two gaming areas, three gaming areas. I think a small room, another room for gaming. I saw some magic players in there. It was in the middle of the day, and um, uh, miniature room gaming. And it was just organized. The people there were very polite to us. Um, 
You know, when we go into stores, I don't expect that people are like, oh, that's a dice tower. No, that's nonsense, right? I don't ever expect that, but I expect them to say, oh, it's a customer or a possible customer. And in both the stores, even the little one that I wasn't that impressed with, I bought something at both stores because I like that. I like when people come and say hi to me and stuff. But the first store, I didn't get anything at, you know. Um, but Epic Loot was a really great store. So yay for all those of you who have the opportunity to go there. Did you feel Recon had a strong university student, student presence or was it just held there? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of students that were there. Thanks for the good time at Recon and Steinkeller. Yeah, but I'm still not sure I can eat after going to Steinkeller. That was a lot of food. Um, which game surprised you the most in Melody's and also on Jason's top 100 list? Oh, man, I have to go back. I was surprised that Gloomhaven was on Jason's list and Melody's. Oh, I was surprised about the colonists. I just didn't expect her to have it that high on the list or on the list at all. Why are there no decent board game events in the West Coast? Well, I think there are some decent events. I mean, there's MeepleCon that's coming up in Vegas, and there's, and there's uh, KublaCon. There's some events out there, but just not as many people live out in the West Coast. That's probably why. Um, me and my fiance are going to be in Miami on our honeymoon in May. What board game cafe would you suggest us to go to? Well, there's only one board game cafe, and that's Mac and Chess. It's a great little place, so you should swing by there and uh, make sure you're hungry because they have some delicious food. Um, better wizard, Merlin or Gandalf? Oh, Gandalf. Did you see the guy with the sword? That guy was great. Uh, Tom, I just backed City of the Gears and it looks awesome. I heard it was almost on the Dice Tower Essentials five years ago. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah, sure. City of Gears was a game that I found. It was going to be Dice Tower Essentials. I really liked it. Um, but Arcane Wonders was not as thrilled with it. The publishers, it has to be a game everyone likes involved. So while I would have made it a Dice Tower Essentials, it just didn't work out. So I put my support behind it, though. I think it's a great game. You should back it and check it out. When is the next live play planned? I don't know if we're going to do a live play this week. It all depends on different things that are going on. Um, we're recording some recorded plays this week. Um, so you might see a recorded play this week if we get it done in time. But I don't think you'll see a live play. Uh, let's see. Who designed the play mats for the Dice Tower? Says someone who just finished the Pledge Manager. And by the way... Thank you, everybody who supports the Pledge Manager. Um, we, I'm just looking at it now. We have 16% of people have gone through. That's, that's fantastic. I'm glad to see um, that happening. Um, well, who designed the playmat? Oh, different people designed them. But uh, Andre uh, uh, from uh, the um, QSF Games and Cool Stuff, he's an artist for them. He does the playmats, and he does a great job on them. Book the Dice Tower Cruise this morning. Yes, that's right. Dice Tower Cruise is now available um, for the public. So uh, definitely, if you want to come on that, there, there's a lot of stuff going on today. The Dice Tower Cruise opened up. It's much more than half full, I think, at this point in time. Dice Tower Con is still, there's still seats open for that. So you want to come to that. And the pledge manager went out. What kind of math did you study in university and postgraduate? None. <laughs> Are you proud of the work you did? No. Can the math have any application to board game design? No. I taught high school math, but I didn't take math as a teacher. I just was good at math, and so that's, what I, that's why I taught math. That's all. How fast will the crew sell out? Do I need to book today? I cannot predict it. This is only the third year we've done it. Um, how fast will it sell out? I don't know. All I know is that it will sell out. Um, do you care about the condition of your board game boxes? Kind of. Um, I talked about this actually in Board Game Breakfast a few weeks ago. Lots of game boxes get nicked. Sometimes the corners split. You know, life goes on. I mean, I would like them to stay nice and neat, but I don't worry that much about it. It's a game. I want to play it. It's what's inside that matters. I want it to look nice if possible, but I got it. I just recently, like a couple years ago, got a, got a new Cosmic Encounter set, so I kept the new box. My old box was all beat up because I took it everywhere. That's okay. You know, it's, it's a game. I don't really care too much about the box. Uh, 
Uh, what are your thoughts on the new version of Lost Cities coming out? Six Expedition included in the new colors. I don't know about the new colors. The Six Expedition is good for Lost Cities. It's fun, but it does make the game easier. When you're, it's a two-player game, and you're competing, there are five different paths to go down, so you'll probably do two, and your opponent will do two, and you might fight over the third one. With three, you'll almost never fight over the cards. So it makes the game slightly easier. That's not bad or good. I think I prefer it with five colors, a little bit more than six, but I can play either one. You don't expect to a dice tower if they're a game store. Shouldn't they know who you are? No, 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 no. Because um, I ex <coughs> maybe the manager might know who I am, right? But the, the, someone who's working at a game store, they don't need to know who I am at all, right? Just like I don't necessarily, if I worked at a game store, I might not need to know who all the big magic podcasters are. I think that someone who works at a game store should be able to talk somewhat authoritatively about the different things at the store. There's supposed to be a, some, you know, like, like um, hey, comics. Okay, these are the hot comics. They need to know a little bit about it, each of the topics, but they might really know something about one of them. They might really know about magic. They might really know about Warhammer. They might really know about a miniatures game or about comics or whatever it is. And they might not know much about board games. So no, I don't expect people to know who I am at all. First of all, it's super egotistical anyway. Um, uh, but I just expect them to know about the subject. I should come in and say, I'm looking for a board game, and they should have a few recommendations, even if they're not a big board gamer. Does Melody have a tattoo on her wrist? No, she just draws on it with marker, that's all. Steinkeller, that was a German restaurant. Um, Tom, what do you need to add Spanish subtitles to the videos? I like to see game videos, but she doesn't, my girlfriend, but she doesn't speak English. It is a real pain for us to add those in, so I don't know that we will. Someone else can make a file, then we can add it in, but that is a lot of work considering we're putting out, you know, several thousand videos a year, or I don't know if it's several thousand, but 300 times. It's like 2,000 videos a year or so. That's a lot. There are very few games that use other dice than D6s. Can you think of, of a reason why? I'd love to see more games with D12s, D20s, or even a D100. I agree. I think that's good, but there's, there's two reasons. One is six-sided dice are the cheapest dice. So there's that. The second reason is that um, you got to have a good reason. You can't just use a die that's bigger because. Six-sided dice have a nice probability, one to six or two to 12. You get to other things, and the probabilities is not as well done. But it's mostly the expense part. I've heard Masks of Nihilothautep will maybe the last expansion for Eldritch Horror. Do you think they've covered the theme adequately, or is there more to do? I think they've covered it adequately. I'll probably be reviewing that one in a week or two. When's the next marathon plan? We're going to be doing it later on in the year, so not anytime soon. Um, have you got your copy of Thunderstone Quest? I have not, um, but we did have a chance to play Thunderstone Quest when we were at Recon, me and Sam did. So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get a copy of it soon. But I did get a copy of some pretty cool games uh, that I'm looking at right over there that I'm very excited to get to. Raiders of the North Sea versus Fire and Axe. Pfft, Raiders of the North Sea. Um, let's see here. My board game money is mostly on PayPal. Can you play the pledge manager with PayPal or is it credit card only? It is currently credit card op only, but we're going to open it up in a couple weeks and make it PayPal. If you have a question about that, just email us at questions at dicetower.com. Um, will Thunderstone be sold in stores too? I think so. I don't know though. I mean, it's a, I mean, the box is like this big. It's a really deep, giant, heavy box. If we miss a Kickstarter, is there a way for us to get into the Pledge Manager, contribute, or some other way to support the Dice Tower? Oh, sure. Um, uh, email me and ask that question, and I'll send it to you. We'll also post it on some of our feeds and stuff tomorrow. We want to give people who already pledged a first shot at getting into the Pledge Manager, um, but we'll send out the other ones. Yeah, anybody can join. Uh, let's see here. What are the hottest Kickstarters we should be backing? Well, I would check my crowd surfing show, but 
Um, there's a lot of kickstarters. There's no way you can pump. Well, you, I don't think you can back all of them. Were you pumped by the Eagles winning the Super Bowl? You're a PA guy, right? Yeah, I'm from Pennsylvania. I was glad to see the Eagles win the Super Bowl. I was glad because of the fans. I know a lot of them are in my family. My brother's a huge Eagles fan. So I'm glad for that, but I don't really, on a personal level, I don't really care. Do you know that April's Math Awareness Month? Maybe, but a lot of this awareness and all this stuff doesn't mean anything. There's a day, like we went, we went to um, Cincinnati. We, uh, we got uh, Cincinnati chili because that's a big thing there, right? And so we were eating it. We looked and, hey, it was chili day, National Chili Day. Does that mean anything? No. But it gave us a good reason to do it. Um, do you dislike Munchkin? No, I'm not a real big fan of Munchkin. But this week I'll be reviewing Munchkin CCG. Come see what I think of that. I'm thinking about picking up Suburbia or Castles of Mad King Ludovic. How much difference is there between them complexity-wise? I think they're the same complexity, but Suburbia is the better game. But they're both very good. Your thoughts on Arkham Horror Living Card Game? Yeah, the, I mean, normally I don't answer questions like these because I'll say just check my review, but I don't think I reviewed that one. I thought it was okay. It was okay, but I'd, I'd, I'd rather get my Arkham fix through Eldritch Horror probably. Or Mansions of Madness. Do you think it's easier for someone to break into game podcasting or video reviewing? It depends, you know. I think it's easy to, to do both if you do it well, but both of the, these categories are extremely crowded. Um, Tom, it seems the board game world is shifting towards co-op and legacy and drifting away from versus games. What do you think of this evolution? Oh, no. It's not drifting away. Are you kidding? So let's say, for example, that 20 co-op games come out in a given year out of 1,000. <laughs> and that's the, the, those are very low numbers. There's probably more than 1,000 games. And then the following year is now... 30 co-op games and people are like wow there's a whole lot more co-op games that's true but there's still a ton of non-co-op games <laughs> very 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 much the truth of it i'm looking over at the shelf here right and so let me just look at these these are games that i'm about to review and so i'm looking there so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. I just count it 37 games, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. I have yet to hit a co-op game. That's 52 games that is counted that, that are not co-op. It's not taking over the industry. I still like it. Did you watch He-Man growing up? A few times. Um, will I be at Essen this year? I will be. What's your favorite non-convention event of the year that Tower does or goes to? I don't really know. Do we go to a non-convention event? I think all the events we go to are conventions. Thoughts on the upcoming Venom movie. Have they put out a full trailer of it yet? Because the first trailer didn't really show me stuff. I wasn't really that interesting. Has anyone ever made us a tribute game? Yes, I've gotten a couple Dice Tower games in the mail before. Um... When's the last time you rode a bike? Uh, it was actually, it's been like four or five years. I had a bike and I was riding it all the time. Then it got stolen and I just never bought a new one. It would take me too long to bike to work, I think. I mean, I think I could bike to work, but it takes me like 15 minutes to get there by car. That's with traffic though. So maybe it would be a, it would be a bit of a ride. I could do it though. I probably should do it, but I have to get the bike first. Hi, Tom. Traveling to Miami from Europe this week. Where should I go to play and find board games in the city? Just type in Miami board game meetup and you'll find uh, the, the, when the game meetups are. Um, do we really need more Star Wars themed board games? Uh, no, but we don't really need any more board games. They're just why not? It's the most popular IP in the world, probably. Um, are you excited for spring training? I'm not really doing any training this spring, so no. Am I going to be at the Game Expo in Birmingham? Yes, I am. 
Are you familiar with unpub conventions? Yes, it's a great place for publisher or would-be designers or even designers to go to and work with each other. Melody seems to be reading, uh, like reading comments on her videos. Have you prepared her for, and how does she handle the inevitable idiocy meanness of the internet? Well, I can't really protect her from that to some degree, right? Um, but I do talk to my kids about that a lot because it is, the internet is a really mean place sometimes. Um, however, the really mean comments, I just delete them on our channel all the time. And some people are like, censorship? No, it's not censorship. It's one thing if you say, I disagree with Tom about this or that. But if you say, Tom is a big, fat idiot, I'm going to delete it. And that's not too big of a deal because it doesn't really bother me because I probably am a big, fat idiot. Um, but if you do it to other people on my channel, I will always delete it because that's a personal attack. It's rude. You would never say it in person. And if you would, you should be smacked. And I have no tolerance for that. None. And I'm, I'm amazed at people thinking that that is okay. That is something I teach my kids not to do when they're five. Like, they go, oh, you're ugly. And people just do it super casually. And like, I don't mean to criticize, but. Or, I don't want to sound rude. Whenever you say, I don't want to sound rude, you want to sound rude. It's like, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just mind boggled by it. But, you know, I'm not too worried about it. I just delete most of the comments, and so we work with it. And kids these days have, I guess, a little bit more that because they get it all the time. I think you might celebrate Key Lime Pie Day. I celebrate Pie Day. That's March 14th, which is coming soon. Ooh. Dice I was putting out a ton of videos, and he thought of putting out fewer with more work going into each. Right. You know, this is that uh, age-old thing. Uh, the reason I put out a lot of different videos is so that we can have a lot of content for you to peruse. Um, if I put out less videos, they would certainly probably be better, for sure. We could put more effort and work into each and every one of them. But then we would not review every single game. There would be of those, I just counted like 80 games, and there's probably 150 on the shelf I'm looking at. Um, if I did not do reviews, of, if I only reviewed 10 of those, I don't think that'd be useful as if we reviewed 50 of them. So that's what I try to do. And you can disagree on that, and I certainly understand that. But I would like to review as much as possible for a couple reasons. One, it's a big library of games for people to... Um, to go and discover on the Dice Tower. But two, it makes us at the Dice Tower really knowledgeable about games because you can say, have you played so-and-so? And the chances chance of me playing that is pretty high. Can the Dice Tower do a top 10 small micro games? Yeah, we've done small games and I've done uh, stocking stuffers before. Any plans for tabletop day? Not yet, uh, if once we do, and then I will uh, announce what we're doing for Tabletop Day. Uh, let's see. Why is there dice toner on the wall? No, I don't really put, um, I don't really put uh, ink on the wall. Oh, you're criticizing the font there. Oh, that's what you're doing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. But it's not toner. It's, it's, it's just yellow paint. I've not played Giant Killer Robots yet. I haven't even seen it, actually. Um, what was my favorite G.I. Joe character? Uh, Law and Order or Rock and Roll? I liked both of them. Well, Sergeant Slaughter I liked a little bit. Favorite Cobra character? Oh, that's easy. Uh, the, the, the two brothers, although I can't remember what their names are. The twins. I really like them. How does a He-Man version of Conan sound? Meh. Do you ever play catch up on your game reviews? Like skipping games to not get overwhelmed when there are too many games to review. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Like not reviewing every game? That already happens. Um, do you use the removable sticker sheet for Gloomhaven? No. I'll be lucky to finish Gloomhaven in the next decade. I'm not going to remove the stickers and go through again. If I did, I would just be like, um, we went, we're went. we going to number one. It's not that hard to follow. If you will ever be in Italy at the beginning of April, well, probably not. Consider to hit the play of the game festival. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of festivals and conventions we like to go to, but uh, for the most part, we have to be kind of invited to go to them at this point. We just don't have time to go to all of them. We'd love to. Be fantastic, but 
Do you play board games with strangers a lot? Sure. I love playing board games with strangers. Really, I do. I, when I go to a convention or place, I play a game with some people, and it's a great time. And then I try to move on and play a game with some other people because I want to get to know different people, as many different people as possible. You should come to Unpub? No, it's not my scene. Again, to be clear, I think it's a great thing. But I don't want to go to the convention where everyone's playing prototypes. I don't really enjoy playing prototypes that much. That's just me. But a lot of people do. So those people should go to Unpub. Um, can you do what's on the wall again? I don't actually understand that question. Oh, oh, the what's on the shelf game uh, from Board Game Breakfast. Yeah, we'll do that at some point for sure. My birthday is Pi Day. Well, how lucky are you? How much editing do your contributors do before they send you a video, or do they do all of it? They do a lot of it. Not quite all of it, but most of it. You seemed a little bored when hosting Melody's in top one, Jason's Top 100. I wasn't bored, so there we go. I guess we'll squash that rumor. I wasn't bored. We had a good time. We came in on a holiday. It was just the three of us, and we had a great time doing it the whole time. We took breaks in between it, um, but I wasn't born. But maybe you know me better than I do, I guess. Um, how much turnaround time does it take to film a video to publishing it? It all depends. Some videos take a lot more time than others. Um, so I'm like, I'm doing 12 reviews this week. I haven't even started. Well, I did the, the component drops for them, but I haven't started reviewing them. But I'm gonna, when this is over, I'll record two of them. Takes me about an hour to do a game, so that's probably all the time I'll have for today to, to review them. So, um, and then the editing and the post production and all that takes even longer. So, it all depends. Some games take much longer than others. What software do you use to edit videos? We use Final Cut Pro. Did you ever request a silver play button award from YouTube for passing 100,000 subscribers? I did! I have it on my wall at home. I like it a lot. Um, I, I want to get the next one, but the next one's a million. Going from 100,000 to a million is a really long task. I mean, it's been like a couple years, I think, since I hit 100,000, and we haven't even hit 200,000 yet. I think, I, I, I think I'm tracking it that we will get a million subscribers like in 25 years. <laughs> I still think it's weird that the subscriber count is the one everyone's all like on board with. I would think total view count is pretty cool. Uh, let me see here real quick, a few things. Oh wow, we're at 20% people have uh, filled out their Kickstarter orders. That is a really, uh, a really cool thing for us. All right, where am I here? Just want to check one thing here real quickly. All right, so let's get back to where we're at. Let's see here. Hello from France. Hello to people from France. Cobra Twins, Tomax and Zamot. That's because that's the name spelled backwards, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like those guys. I also like Destro, and I always felt bad for him that Cobra Commander was messing up his plans, or he was messing up Cobra Commander's plans. Snakes or spiders? I don't really appreciate either one of them. Given how many games you own and haven't played, do you often need to use the manuals, especially for setup? There are very few games that I don't look at the manuals. I almost always do. We were just talking about this the other day, huh? I said, I think every deck building game should come with a sticker on the side that says, how many cards you start with, when you buy cards, where do they go, um, and do you have to discard all your cards at the end of the turn? Something like that. That should be on every deck building game because I'm always like, is this a draw five or draw six game? Is it? Is this... Do you, when you buy a card, does it go in your hand? Is it a discard pile and your draw pile? And things like that. You know, just uh, the, it's funny because these minor things between games, and if, you know, this will happen sometimes. I'll get out of game and people are like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I love this game. And then I look at how many cards you start with, and they're like, I thought you knew how to play this game. Well, well, yeah, I know how to play it, but I always get mixed up on how many cards to draw. That's all.
Hey, Tom, what value do you give to games funded through Kickstarter that otherwise wouldn't get produced? I don't understand the question. I would give them the value that it does on them. So, like, if it's 120, I would give them 120. Is Black Panther the best Marvel movie up to this point? No, my favorite Marvel movie is Thor Ragnarok, actually. But I do like Black Panther a lot. Um... Uh, let's see, do we need, uh, hang on a second, do we need translators in Essen? Uh, if you're willing to do that sort of thing, email me. We, we, we might need some, I don't know. Has Chief Sokoto ever met Commander Bedmus? I don't know who Commander Bedmus is actually, so I would, I'm going to go with no, but I, I'm not like Chief Sokoto's keeper. He's met many, many people. Between the two of us, we've met millions of people probably. So, I mean, sure, we possibly could have met him in one of our, on one of our journeys, but I don't know him. Um, what do you think of mixing Heroescape and Imperial Assault Skirmish? No, probably not a good idea. Thought you looked very proud of Melody during the top 100. Yeah, I did. I was very pleased to see she's just done so much better. Sir, the W in Dice Tower on the wall behind you looks like an endless like a visual and toner. No, no, the W is also in the yellow paint. It's uh, we didn't use toner at all. Toner is really expensive. Ah, oh, hate I hate have to buy it for the printers all the time. The Twitch feed looks and sounds great with less delay than YouTube. That's right, folks, in case you're not wondering, that we're also streaming this on Twitch, but I'm only taking questions from YouTube. So if you're watching this on Twitch thinking, why isn't he answering these questions? Because right now, we're only getting them from YouTube, although we will probably change that in the future at some point. Try to pull questions from both. Um, the audio got delayed on the video somehow. Any way to fix it? Um, I think we're just going to muscle through at this point. I don't know. Why don't your longer videos have ads throughout them? I don't know. I figured people would find that annoying. So you have to go in and manually add those ads in yourself to, uh, to get those to work. Does Dice Tower take other forms of donations besides money, i.e. volunteer time or work? Well, unless you're planning to come down here and work with me, uh, I mean, I appreciate that, but we have a lot of volunteers doing a lot of different things. Um, but... Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you have something specific, you can always email me and say, I would like to do this for the Dice Tower, and I'll certainly listen for sure. Um, what's the relationship between Dice Tower and Cool Stuff? Well, Cool Stuff ships out our Kickstarter stuff, uh, or Qu Quartermaster Logistics does, actually. Um, and they sponsor our show, um, and we uh, say they're a great place to buy online games, and that's pretty much the relationship. Um, and then the next question you said was, what kind of agreement do you have with board games that include Dice Tower awards on the box? If someone says, Tom, can we put the Dice Tower award that we want on the box? I'll say, did you win the Dice Tower award? And they'll say, yes. I'll say, then put it on the box. If they say no, I'll say, well, then that would be a lie. Realistically, only people who ever won ask, and I just say, yes. There's no fee to put the Dice Tower awards on a logo on a box. Um... I know a lot of people, oh, what is this all about? His nonsense question. Crazy old Maurice says, any women going to join the top 100 list videos? Did you not just watch me, Melody and Jason? Oh, I see Melody's not a woman yet. Um, nonsense. She was in it. And we got Mandy's coming up this year to do that too. Um, but anyhow, uh, let's see here. Oh, a lot of people are asking, did you play this? Did you play this? When we play it, we'll post it. I promise a review of it eventually. Favorite flavor of popcorn? Probably cheese. Although, I don't know, maybe sometimes just nothing. Just a really good popcorn with nothing on it is fine. I don't really necessarily like getting that stuff. White cheddar cheese is the one I probably like the best. Or sometimes I'll just pick up a, a random spice from my uh, cabinet and put them on the popcorn. That's always good. Hi, Tom. Sam and Z are coming to Iceland in September to a convention called Midgard. Just wondering why you aren't coming. Oh, man. I'm very sad. I'd love to come, but I'm going to Poland for a board game camp there, which is also going to be really cool. They just happen to be at the same time. That's all. 
I know Jason really likes area control games. Has he played Feudum yet? I don't think so. Because he usually plays my stuff, and I'm looking at Feudum over there, and I know I haven't played it with him yet. Uh, Dice Tower Cruise is great. Ends up costing less than Dice Tower Con if you stay in a hotel. Probably that's true. Am I going to Gamma, says Heavy Cardboard. Well, yes. You should know that because you're on the list of going also. Um, for sure. I thought you were proud of Jason during the top 100. Yeah, was, look, here's the deal. And again, I'm really, I like, like this. I think people, you know, people talk about being on video. Not everyone is naturally good on video. Most people don't sit there and they're just good on video. In fact, there's a lot of people who are really animated and fun in real life. And I'll say, oh, wow, these people would be great on video. And then they're not. Some people freeze up. But even if you're not good on video, you can get better on video. Um, I, we definitely see this with my kids, you know, on video, and I'll be like, so what do you think of the game? And I'll ask very specific questions. And that's one thing, and I, I don't, I don't want to brag, but that's one thing I'm good at is facilitating things. I keep things moving. I try to bring people into conversations. Um, sometimes people say I cut people off and stuff, but there's, a, there's very well-reasoned things behind this. I keep things going. I don't let people over-talk, but I also don't try to let them under-talk. Try to keep the conversation going and not get boring, and you can get better at it. Go back and see when Jason first came on camera, when Melody first came on camera, and see where they are now. They are much, much better because both of them wouldn't give up. Both of them kept trying hard, and I like that. Regarding the value of Kickstarter games, I mean, how highly do you consider the quality of the games produced that you've tried? There's, there's, no, there's no difference, really, I think, at this point, between a Kickstarter game and an actual published game. They're just published through different means, really. Hello from Poland. What's your favorite game from Polish designers? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at all the different ones. Can you pronounce Ignacy Trebuchek's last name? Oh, probably not. Um... I thought you tried very hard to keep Jack Vassar Memorial Fund separate from the Dice Tower, but there's a logo on the wall. Isn't that a conflict? Oh, no. That's uh, one of our sponsors. They don't pay us any money, the Jack Vassar Memorial Fund. We give them a free sponsorship um, on the walls. So, and I like to keep that in the forefront of people's mind. It's not part of the Dice Tower, uh, but, and, and neither is uh, Chessex, but I have one of their dice here. And neither is uh, that strawberry that's sitting there for no reason at all. And this brick here is from Lowe's. And the wall, I'm not sure who made that. This hat is uh, from Magic Kingdom. It's a Disney's hat, I think. What is Chief Sokoteo's favorite board game? Oh, I think we talked about that last time. So uh, go watch last ones. It's a, it's a pretty interesting game. I can tell you about a second favorite game. This is a more quiet one. It is a game called Vrush. And in Vrush, it's, it's a very small game. Um, and it looks like there's only four spaces, but they're in five dimensions. And so moving the pieces there, but you move the pieces with a look. And a look is kind of like um, a small pin, but you have to kind of maneuver it in and to move the pieces around. And your goal is to get four in a rela, which is, sometimes these concepts are harder to explain. So it's kind of like a row, but it curves slightly from one dimension into another. First person to do that is the winner. I, 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 it, it's a little too thinky for me. Um, yeah, a lot of people are saying if you if, if you're for some reason having a problem with the delay in audio, refresh it. If you reach one million subscribers, will you buy yellow toner to celebrate? Uh, no, probably not. No heavy cardboard shirt today. I don't think I'm wearing a heavy cardboard shirt. Uh, I do wear heavy cardboard shirts because they're very comfortable. No, this is a fireworks shirt. They gave me a free fireworks uh, t-shirt because I might have bought a lot of fireworks from them. Did I wear a heavy cardboard shirt yesterday? I might have. Um, have you ever tried rosemary and cheese popcorn? No, it sounds really good. Sounds good, though, for sure. Um, any thoughts on a new Broken Token modular dice towers? Are you kidding? Go look at my dice tower feed. They're amazing. I mean, like, they're so good. So good. So good. Fantastic. I love them. I want them. I'm going to build the biggest modular dice tower in the world. I am really going to do that. I'm going to build one that goes, I'm going to, I already have it planned. I'm going to put it on the wall here and have it mounted on the wall and go from top to bottom. Very, very exciting. It's really cool. 
Um, have you ever DM'd an RPG game? Oh, yeah, I have. Um, actually, I've only played in an RPG game a few times. I've mostly been a dungeon master or game master, whatever. I used to do superhero games all the time in college. Um, I, would, I would do those, and I did um, some other RPG stuff, some Dungeons & Dragons. Did I do Star Wars? I don't think I did Star Wars. I did Pathfinder for a while, too. Um, I tend to like to be in charge of the universe, I guess. I like being the bad guys of the game, so that's what I do. But I haven't done it in a long time. Do you anticipate having a lot of new games in your top 100 by the end of this year? Well, so far this year, I have, I think, I have, well, I have two games that are definitely making my top 100 and one that will likely make my top 100. But, I mean, there's so many other games. And, it, and this time of year is never really a time to guess that. I mean, there's so many good games that come out at Gen Con and Essen. I still haven't played all the Essen games. I've played a lot of them. But I still see some sitting over there in the shelf. There's just so many games. I talk about that shelf a lot, right? Um, am I excited for Zombie Side Green Horde? Not particularly. I'm not not excited for it. It looks okay. I'm more excited, honestly, for Feudum. That's probably the game I'm most interested in. I'm liking a Euro game kick these days. Um, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily want to play too many heavy Euro games. Don't get excited, Edward. Um, but I've been enjoying them more for some reason these days. So... I don't know. I kind of float from thing to thing and what I'm excited about. Do you charge for reviews? No, we don't. That's actually in my FAQ. It's going up tomorrow because it's one of those things that kind of mind boggles me. And in the industry, we deal with this all the time is that it seems like on the internet, people are like, oh, people are charging for review copies. I don't know any reviewer that charges for review copies with the exception of, there is some, the, like the websites that are like, uh, Dr. Toy, I don't know if Dr. Toy does in particular. Oh, it scared me. Sorry. It's a package at my gate. Um, I don't know of some of those like nationwide magazines and newspapers and, and things like that that give those special seals. They might charge. In fact, I know that um, one of those, I forget which one uh, is, uh, Major Fun. I know they charged. But they only charged if they, if you asked them to do the review, not if they asked you for the review. But whatever. Of us folks on YouTube and the written reviewers, I don't know any of them that charge for reviews. I know some that charge for previews, um, but I don't know anyone that charges for reviews, and yet it comes up all the time. Now, it might be a mix between the paid previews and paid reviews, but I, I don't know. I think some, there's some people out there that I think are just trying to muddy the waters. The fact is, the game, people send us a game and we review it. Um, if you think that game is payment for the review, you're dead wrong. Although there are some amazing games, I guess, right, that are... But the, the amount of work that goes into a uh, review, the hours of playing it, the hours of thinking about and preparing for review, the hours of doing the review, the hours of editing it, I could go out and get a job and probably have bought the game two or three times instead. Um, so that's not really... And especially since the game doesn't really cost the company, you know, let's say the game's an $80 game, it costs the company 20 bucks to send that to you. They get a pretty good deal out of it, the companies usually. Um, do you know a website with publishers and their actual target needs? As much as I prefer worldwide, it can be even from the U.S. I don't actually understand that. Are you asking like, how you get a job with a publisher. The best way to get a job with a publisher is to start going to conventions and just and volunteering. They will then see you and say, oh, this is a good person, have those skills, be good, and you can move up in the world. Would you like to see a game with a podcast YouTube theme? Maybe, but that seems super meta. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you enjoy trolling your viewers? Trolling my viewers? Sir! Or, no, it is a sir. Why would I want to do that? Um, I'm coming a day early to Dice Tower Con. Suggestion for one thing to do on Tuesday. Well, the Tuesday's the uh, day before July 4th. I mean, you can go to the parks, but the parks are going to be very crowded. I would consider possibly going to SeaWorld. It's not nearly as crowded as the other parks, and it's a really good park. Um, Tom is bringing the heat today. That's because I'm back in the heat. Ohio is cold and rainy, but we're back with the heat. I'm so glad about that. Um, what 
Let's see here. Was that a measuring tape suspenders? That was measuring tape suspenders. <laughs> my only regret is I wear them under my shirt so no one ever sees them to see, except, oh, the TSA guys always see them. That's right. Suspenders. I said one of these days I'm gonna go in without the t-shirt underneath and just have the suspenders and the shirt. And then we'll see who stops me in line again. Um, I have all sorts of, so I have keyboard suspenders and Einstein suspenders. I have all sorts of suspenders. Um, will you answer a question that doesn't ask anything significant? Eh, probably not. Um, are you doing anything at UK Games Expo as well as attending? I think I'm doing a designer panel. Uh, we're doing a game show and we're doing a top 10. All right, let's see. What system did you use for the superhero game? Oh, um, well, I used the uh, Palladium system. Now, I know that's not a good system, but at the time I didn't know. The thing about the Palladium games is, is that the Heroes Unlimited is what it's called. Uh, it's, it's a great building system. Like you could build the coolest super, you could build anything. If you have all the different, they have like three books and core books and aliens and mutants and they're really great about being a hero, but it doesn't actually tell you how to build the, how to play the game. So I kind of just made that up. I uh, had D30 dice and stuff and I just made the system up. It was, you know, it worked fine. But yeah, I'm not as impressed with Palladium after having played their game. They don't actually give you good ways to play the game. Dungeons and Dragons does a much better job at it. But it's such a cool building. I mean, you can build and I don't think there's a superhero that you can't imagine that you can't build the Palladium system. There's just that many different uh, possibilities. Will you review Zombie Side Green Horde? Oh, probably Sam's going to do that one. He's the Zombie Side guy. So I would assume that he will review it. Um, would you consider reviewing or making a list of your favorite board game apps? Possibly. Is Melody an RPG fan? Yeah, she likes the idea a lot. Do you like one-on-one -on -one versus all games or hidden movement games? That's a confusing statement, actually. Do I like... The one on one versus all are hidden movement games. Oh yeah, oh, uh, I see what you're saying. In those games, do I like to be the person hiding? Every time, I love it. Um, if a game has any sort of one versus all, like Fortress America was the United States versus the three countries attacking, then I always want to be the one person. I don't know why, I just think that stuff's fun. If I lose, I'd be like, well, that's because they all ganged up on me. Hi, Tom. Did the Dice Tower team ever consider standardizing their reviews? For instance, Z uses the target system. You do component drops. Sam tends to go more in-depth with rules and gameplay. I don't think so. I don't think I will cookie-cut our reviews ever. And I don't think anyone else in the world wants to do the component drops. And don't. Okay, if you're thinking about doing it, don't. It's too late for me. I started it. I can't stop. But, but you can do it. Run. Uh, well, I do Tom versus the Internet, more gameplays, probably at some point. Uh, let's see here. Go get the package, Tom. I'm doing unboxing live. Well, the package is at my house, not at the studio. <laughs> uh, let's see here. The package is obviously more toner. Now that's possible. That is a package that I should be getting some more of. Uh, let's see. What's the best board game to get started with board games? Oh, that all depends on you. What do you like? Pick a theme. Tell me your theme and I'll tell you a game. Something you like. Something that sounds fun. Oh, I see. Melody's in the comments. All right. Well, there's that. All right. Um, SeaWorld boo. Why are you booing SeaWorld? SeaWorld's great. They have some great roller coasters. They got, you know, you can see the, the show there for the dolphin show is phenomenal. It's way cheaper than the other parks. The food is inexpensive compared to the other parks. It's way less crowded. I, I don't know. I like it a lot. 
Um, let's see. I'm trying to read through these here. Here's a limit. Sentimental favorite, says somebody. Yeah, yeah, I know. Do you still support SeaWorld and zoos in general despite modern controversy over them? I don't know what the controversy is. Um, the, I wish there was more dinosaurs in them. Sam, Jason, Melody is the Euro Trio. Well, there's actually more people in our group who play Euros than us. I think we're the only ones in a dice tower who play them. Um, I always get a kick out of people who tell me how much I dislike Euros when La Hava is in my top ten. But, um, but yeah, we I there I like playing Euros with with them because they both grasp the mechanisms. Jason grasps stuff pretty quickly. He doesn't listen when I explain the rules the first time, but he, when the second time he gets it. And Melody, she'll say, I don't know what I'm doing the whole time, and then she'll eventually beat us you know, for not knowing what she's doing. Um, but I, I don't know, and, they, and neither one of them complains that there's no theme, so that's mostly me, but I still like the mechanisms of the game. Um, You said you like running the bad guys in RPGs. Are there certain tropes you particularly enjoy hamming up? Yeah, I like the whole, the little guy who you met at the very beginning is really critical to the end, whether bad or good. That's, that's my favorite trope to deal with. Like, remember that person that started you in this whole adventure? They're here at the end. <laughs> I like to have things that don't seem like a big deal matter later on. I love that. I like that anywhere, right? That's why the very first time I, I, I watched Doctor Who, that's what hooked me on Doctor Who. It wasn't the uh, cheesy time travel and, uh, and just the Doctor Who. I liked all that stuff. But what really got me in Doctor Who was on the very first season, and I'm talking about the new season, so the ninth Doctor or whatever of the new the stuff in, in, in this century. Um, on the very first season, the final one, they went back and referenced stuff that happened in all the previous episodes. And I was like, what? They actually had thought ahead for this? That blew my mind because in you know, US TV shows, you know, they just seem to write stuff as they go. And that was really cool to me. And so I love when stuff like that happens. Um, other, the first season of Prison Break did a really good job of that, where certain things in the beginning mattered at the end, and I really liked that. Tom, you love food, you love games, but do you love food while gaming? Why, yes, I do. Hi, Tom's greeting from Brazil. Recently went to Orlando, but couldn't find you. Oh, well, that's because I live near Miami, not Orlando. They're about three hours apart. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm four hours from Orlando. Uh, what's the prettiest game you've ever played? Oh, man, that's, there's so many beautiful games that are out there. And, I mean, there's pretty artwork, and then there's pieces, and then there's, you know, cool miniatures. It's kind of a mixture on which games are really awesome and cool to go with. Um... Let's see here. I saw that Eric is going to Grand Con. Who else will be going? I don't know, but Eric is going for sure. That's the same week that Sam and Z are in Iceland and I'm in Poland. So we're, the Dice Tower team is going to be spread everywhere. Salmon or cod? Depends on the mood I'm in, honestly. I like both a lot. Um... I like Euros too, I'm just tired of boring themes. Right, and this is something I really have a problem with. I just talked about this in a live Q&A um, that we did and it wasn't recorded, so I'll say the same thing here. I don't understand why there's not more of these heavy Euros with really fun themes. I mean, what's wrong with, I mean, why does everything have to be about building a castle or um, you know, building a farm or trading in the Mediterranean or all that jazz? They, they pick themes that are not that interesting. And I get that the theme that won't necessarily match up to the mechanisms, but why not do something fun? Like, if you look at board game apps, I'm, I'm not board game apps, but like uh, apps for the phone, they're fun themes. Hey, I built my zoo. Hey, I have a building here that I'm building up, or I'm running these guys, and they're all sorts of fun. There's not like, build a European castle very slowly that will never be attacked, you're just building it. There isn't that sort of thing. It's fun, bright, fun themes. Why can't we have fun, bright, fun themes, but with good, Solid mechanisms behind it. That, I think, would be amazing. What 
What are your thoughts on board game pricing not being relative to what you find in a box? For example, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's up to you. Is the value worth it to you? I think the actual play of the game counts for something, right? The component's right. Some games are more expensive than other games. But is the game fun enough for you to get despite that? If you go around doing that, you'll, you'll run into madness, I think. I mean, I think there's sometimes you can say, that's really expensive. Or this game's pretty inexpensive for, you know, what you get in it, whatever. But every game's going to be a different price point. There's no way you're going to be able to compare them. There's things like art and designers and where the game comes from. There's all sorts of different things in the back. Do I like Tang? I do like Tang. I'll go back to designing my new game, Traders and Toners in the, Terran in the Terranian. That's a pretty good game. It sounds good. I'd play it. Will we see you at Gen Con this year? Hopefully. Unless I'm hiding. Uh, Gen Con is, I always say, sure, come by and see us at Gen Con, but because it's so crowded, it's possible you can miss people at Gen Con. Sunny D or purple stuff? Uh, I like Tang better than both of those. Will you plug my book? No. All right, let's see here. Someone needs to vet a board game that's both food proof and food themed. That sounds cool. Um, do you think Z or Sam will try old traditional Icelandic food? Probably not, because I would imagine most people in Iceland don't eat that food either. You know, it happens in different places. Like, oh, some people used to eat this. Great. Are you eating it? No, you're eating pizza? Yeah, okay. Then don't be telling me that you have these old weird traditional foods you ate if you don't actually eat them now. Now, if you eat them now, fine, bring it on. But most people don't do that. Any chance Eric will ever do a live Q&A? Do you mean like our Dice Tower Tonight show that we do every other week? That's coming up next Wednesday, Dice Tower Tonight. Doo -doo -doo. Do you like Swedish meatballs? I love Swedish meatballs. Let's see here. Would you do a video of your favorite new designers? Well, maybe, but I don't know. Probably not. Do, 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 do. How prepared are you for the zombie apocalypse? I feel like we're pretty prepared. If a zombie apocalypse ever happened, I would just go to the nearest military base. There's no way the military are going to be overthrown by zombies. Any military, and I'm just going to use the U.S. military because that's where I'm at, they would stomp all over the zombies. That's why The Walking Dead bothers me. There's no way The Walking Dead would have completely decimated the military like they did. The military would settle down, they'd create a perimeter, they'd stop the zombies, they'd have things in play. They, the whole zombie apocalypse would be stopped. And if not stopped, it would be contained very, very easily. Um, Tom, the fact is that fun is also a subjective matter. I consider science, chemistry, and statistics fun. I consider exploring other historical eras fun. Oh, sure, sure. No, I get that. I'm just saying that many people consider other things fun. Let's take the idea of running a zoo. Very popular. Or running a theme park. I know running a theme park is popular because Roller Coaster Tycoon has shown that and how well it's done. And yet, we continue to have these old historical games. And it's like, they, it's like they pick up an atlas and go, what city has not yet had a game built about it? And that's fine. That works. But many times the theme is just pasted on anyway. So why not post, paste a theme that will get more people into games? Don't you want more opponents for your games, for the heavier Euro games? Don't you want more people to want to play those with you? So why not make themes that they're like, ooh, that sounds fun. And especially with the art, with this guy on the cover going, well, if he looked like that, maybe I would buy it, because that would be funny. But, um, yeah. Alrighty. Well, we are at 3 o'clock, so I need to get going here. And get going and um, uh, end it. Sorry, folks. I got some reviews and things to do. I'm still a little tired, too, from traveling. But not too tired because today was not too bad. We got up and flew on a single flight back. Um, so that wasn't bad at all. Uh, but lots of things to do. I've done unboxings. I've done dumps of components. I've uh, not eaten lunch, but I'm going to eat some bude chige for dinner tonight. So I'm excited about that. So i got some reviews to do. And 
Let's see what percentage of people have uh, filled out the pledge manager, because that's a nice thing to see. Ooh, 25%? Yeah! One-fourth of everybody has already gone through and done the pledge manager. That is fantastic. Thank you to those who did that. Okay, well, I'm going to get going here. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much. Hmm. How many aerospace engineers does it take to change a light bulb? None. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, you know. Uh, how many amoebas does it take to change a light bulb? One. No, two. No, four. No, eight. No, 16. No, 32. Uh, let's see. How many art directors does it take to change a light bulb? Does it have to be a light bulb? How many auto mechanics does it take to change a light bulb? Six. One to force it with a hammer. And five to go out for more bulbs. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, how many cafeteria staff does it take to change a light bulb? Sorry, we closed 18 seconds ago and I just cashed up. How many sensors does it take to change a light bulb? One, two, bleep, 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 and another two, bleep, 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 wow, bleep, 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 with a bleep. Let's see. How many circus performers does it take to change a light bulb? Four, one for the money two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. How many college students does it take to change a light bulb? Well, no, I forgot my calculator at home. I like that one. All right, uh, let's see here. How many teenage girls does it take to screw in a light bulb? One, but she'll be on the phone for five hours telling all her friends about it. <laughs> I like that one too. All right. How many tourists does it take to change a light bulb? Six. One to hold the bulb and five to ask for directions. That sounds legitimate. Um, how many fishermen does it take to change a light bulb? Four. One to change a light bulb and three to brag about how big the old one was and how about the one that they would have changed but it got away. Yeah, that sounds legitimate here. Um, how many waiters does it take to change a light bulb? None. Even a burned out bulb can't catch a waiter's eye. <laughs> okay, that was, maybe wasn't that funny, but I, I thought it was funny. Um, how many finger, I mean, I'm sorry, how many kindergarten t kids does it take to change a light bulb? One, two, three. Mommy, can I use my toes? How many magicians does it take to change the light bulb? It depends on what you want it changed into. Hmm, okay. How many monkeys does it take to change the light bulb? Two. One to do it and one to scratch its butt. How many mutants does it take to screw in a light bulb? Two-thirds. I'm not sure that would make sense. Uh, how many road workmen does it take to change a light bulb? Five. One to change the light bulb, and four to lean on their shovels and watch the one working. Well, I don't think road workers would find that one funny. Ha <laughs> ha. How many grocery store cashiers does it take to change a light bulb? Are you kidding? They won't even charge, change a $5 bill. How many people on the dice tower does it take to change a light bulb? 